In the last episode, we were sailing to nowhere, and we didn't film it, but we ended up spending the night at an unnamed anchorage on the south coast of Tenerife. You join us now sailing up the east coast to a very promising anchorage. Well guys, I'm afraid we haven't been filming much at all recently. When we were on the south coast of Tenerife, there was so much swell. It was absolutely horrendous and we didn't sleep at all. We've been absolutely exhausted and not wanting to do anything, let alone pick the camera up and film. But now we've come to the east coast of Tenerife, we're protected from the swell. It's absolutely lovely. beautiful here the water is so clear the plan for today is to take the dinghy to shore get a bus and try and buy a bridge 12 volt fridge because we are so sick of our vegetables going mouldy and just yeah not being able to store anything that needs to be cold. Something that we need to improve on is our perception of distances. When we come into an anchorage, everything seems so close. It appears like we've anchored close to the shore when looking from the boat. But when we go ashore and look back, we realise quite how ridiculously far we are from anything. I tend to be the one that worries about being too shallow or too close to shore or cliffs, and Liam tends to worry about us anchoring too close to other boats. It's better to be cautious like this than to take risks, but the more anchoring we do, the better we'll get at judging safe distances without being miles from shore. Well, our plan to get a fridge today looks like it's not gonna happen. We've just walked all the way to this bus stop, waiting for the bus, got on it, and the driver said that you can't pay in cash and you can't pay with like a debit card or anything. You have to have a bus card and he told us that we could buy one in the petrol station so we went in there but the guy said they don't sell them the only place we could buy one is Santa Cruz but how do we get to Santa Cruz without getting on a bus? it's, it's, a, it's a never ending loop so we don't know what we're going to do how do we get to Santa Cruz? there's no car hire places around here we can't even hire a car and get there but how do we get a bus card? How are we going to get a fridge? And to make today even more of a fail, after we went to the petrol station and they said they didn't sell bus cards, we searched for a tourist information. They said there was one on Google Maps, but we couldn't find it anywhere. So then we thought, okay, let's just go and get some food from a cafe. Went to a cafe. They didn't. There was literally one cafe open that we could find in the whole town and they weren't even like serving food or anything, we just had a drink. Then we've come back to get back to Sereda and we've run out of fuel in the dinghy. <sighs> we, we meant to buy fuel when we were in La Palma and we forgot and then we went to buy some when we were in Los Cagantes and we didn't. Oh, we're so unorganised and so now we're rowing back. You said we? I did a bit of rowing. I did some rowing and then you said that you would take over. And it's just so hot. Like, none of these problems would be quite so bad if it wasn't so hot. If there was just some breeze, it would be lovely. Not, not right now it wouldn't, because it probably wouldn't blow right Okay, true, but I would love a bit of breeze. 
So we're back to no fridge and now we don't have an outboard. Sad times. Well, here we go again, showing you another of our mistakes. Never gets any warmer. <laughs> We've run over the dinghy. So we were anchored over there and there was another yacht anchored over here, but they've moved. And so we decided that we will take their place because it's closer to the beach. Oh and... yeah, it's properly wrapped around. Oh, great. <laughs> And then we were hoping it would be a little bit more protected. And we decided we would leave the dinghy in the water that we just tow it while we just quickly moved positions. Be a bad idea, because we've run it over. <laughs> right, can you let it let it off that cleat? Yep. I'll try and unravel it. Woohoo, Liam's freed it. <laughs> Look at all the anti foul it's rubbed off. So bad really bad oh dear we absolute fails can you untangle the line that's round it now shall I, try. shall I pass you we need something just to tie yeah let me find you something that's just come off our prop and prop shaft and that's only one bit. There's quite a few litter in the seabed now. Well, maybe we don't even need to lift out after all. <laughs> yeah, we do, because it, it needs a good clean. But, yeah, you can even see where it's moulded to the shape of the prop shaft. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's now all over the sand. Now oh, we can stay with the rest of them, stay with his friends. There's the rest of the world. A surf squall came into the bay during the day. There were no waves, they just paddled around, but we should have taken it as a sign because once it went dark, the swell picked up. Well, we've had an absolutely horrific night's sleep. It was forecast small waves from the southwest and we've got huge waves from the northeast. So we've got to leave. Um, we've snapped the snubber. So the chain's just grating like crazy and pulling really, really hard on the, um, on the windlass. So right now we're just going to try and get the dinghy back on board and for the first time leave an anchorage in massive swell, in the wind, in the dark and try and get up to a marina and be safe. If only we could have filmed us getting out of that bay because it was sketchy and terrifying at the time, but quite awesome. Liam got soaked from the waves crashing over the bow as he lifted the anchor. I was desperately trying to keep us pointed into the waves though, because I was worried that if we turned beam on, firstly Liam might fall overboard, although he was clipped on, and secondly, we'd struggle to get back on course. We had the engine at 2000 revs, but we were only going 0.8 knots into the swell and dead into the wind. We wanted to head north to a marina, but although we were pointing north, we were actually going south. I was so confused. It took me a while to comprehend what the chart plotter was showing, but we were in fact being pushed south. So we had no choice but to sail south.
Fortunately, Liam already knew of an anchorage behind an oil rig servicing station that would give us good protection from this northerly swell. So just a quick update for you guys on where we are and what we're doing. We decided we needed to lift the radar out. I mean, we knew we needed to do it anyway, but we've been kind of cutting it off because it's expensive. But we decided we're going to do it in Radazol, which is where we are right now. We had our awful sail slash motor sail up here yesterday. We arrived and radioed the marina, to which we got no response. Radioed again still no response so we decided we'll just head in and see what happens and as we were heading in we finally got a response from them saying that they didn't have a reservation for us even though we'd we'd originally just booked in to lift out and then we'd emailed saying actually do they have space for us to come a few days before so we're booked in to lift out on Wednesday and we said could we come to the marina on Saturday and, um, and just stay in the marina because just not on anchorage around here that's not rolly and they said yes they've got space so that's how much it was going to be fine so we, we did have a reservation but the office is closed because it's a weekend and the guys that were there didn't know that we were coming so this is where we got put we got put here yesterday noisy cars and uh spent the night here we've got to spend tonight here as well because the office still closed, won't open until 9 o'clock in the morning, so we're just uh, stuck on the waiting dock, which isn't ideal, but it's better than being in a rolly anchorage. made it to Santa Cruz finally we managed to get the bus turns out you can download an app and you can put money into a virtual wallet and buy the tickets and then you just scan a QR code when you get on the bus and away you go so here we are we're just gonna scope the place out hopefully find somewhere to buy a fridge have a look at the chandleries see what they're selling how expensive everything is and yeah Get a good idea of what we can go to KFC. <laughs> yeah, get some chicken, get some meat, protein. Unfortunately, the first chandlery was shut and had no indication of whether it will be open again anytime soon. The next chandlery we went to was open, but we weren't allowed to wander around. They did stock fridges and could order us in one that would fit in Sereda. It was crazy expensive. The final chandlery also sold fridges and was a bit cheaper, but they didn't have any that would fit in Sereda. We decided to make a day of being in Santa Cruz, so we went to a cafe and for a walk around a park.